Good day, everyone. Dr. James Markham with another Biblical Prescription for Life. I want to answer a question today that's come in. And if you have a question, please send it our way, or better yet, video the question and send it to heartwisejm at yahoo.com. But our question today is, I have colon cancer, and should I have genetic screening? Well, I'm sorry that anyone has to deal with cancer. Um, unfortunately, the last few years, cancer rates have been increasing, um, especially in younger populations. We see more and more colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, and um, this is a problem and this is a very good question. Um, but before we answer that question about cancer, colon cancer, and genetic screening, I think the information will apply to all of us. Let's go to a biblical prescription. Um, 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. So we'll hold that with us today. Um, you know, in this YouTube channel, we try to focus the truth on the Bible and the true healer Christ we try to take a balanced approach in the information we give you and the information we share. But this text tells us the times were coming when people might not do that. And we see that around us in today's world. There's lots of places to get information, lots of different teachers. Many of the teachers will say whatever the people want to hear. Um, and many people are not looking for the sources of truth, but I think the truth is important. But let's get to this question today. I have colon cancer. Um, should I have genetic screening? Well, before I answer that question, I want to make sure some of us have some basic knowledge here. Um, we're going to talk about what cancer is in the most basic sense. But here is a picture of DNA. Um, some have called DNA the language of God because within the DNA is the genetic material that really describes us. It makes proteins, it makes proteins that make enzymes. This decides how our body functions. I like to think of the DNA as our hardware. And of course, things that affect the hardware called the epigenetics is sort of like the software. And we have found that lifestyle and the way we live affects our software, which can affect our hardware. When the hardware has problems, mutations especially, these are damaged genes, mutations, the, the, the DNA can become abnormal. And when it becomes these mutations, the DNA can make cells uncontrollably over and over. And that's what's happening in cancer. There's a mutation, the DNA is making cells uncontrollably. Sometimes these cells stay in the organ that's made in and it doesn't go anywhere. We call that a benign tumor, but that can still be a problem if the benign tumor affects that organs or tissues function. Then of course, if it spreads, we call that malignant. And of course, cancer cells can spread via the lymph system, via the blood throughout the body, and it can start dividing in other organ systems. Of course, if it divides and becomes, takes up space in the brain, um, we can have brain malfunctions, headaches, seizures, symptoms. Um, if it goes to the bone marrow, the bone marrow can maybe malfunction, doesn't make red blood cells, become anemic, can go in the bones and cause pain. Um, it can move to the lungs and cause breathing problems. Well, when the cells move from the places of origin, we call that metastasize. So that is a basic explanation of cancer, but the DNA has mutations. These may 
Mutations make cells uncontrollably. If they spread, it's called malignancies. Um, if it stays locally, we say that's still a tumor, but it's benign. And we sort of name the cancer based on the organ that it starts in. And in this case, the question is about colon cancer. So the cancer started in the colon. Now, all of the cancers that are out there, there are risk factors or lifestyle things that increases the risk. And everyone's heard of how, how different types of you know, cancers are, are turned on by lifestyle, cigarettes, different carcinogens out there. We all know about that. Um, but this person has colon cancer and they want to know about genetic screening. I'm not gonna talk about the treatment for colon cancer, but let's talk about genetic screening because this is very important. I think each one of us, um, we should understand in our families, if possible, a detailed history of our family's medical conditions. The things that our mothers and fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers on both sides, paternal and maternal aunts and uncles, um, we should record that, especially if there's been problems at early ages. We should especially look for early ages, cancer at early ages, blood clots at early ages, and problems with the cardiovascular systems. Many cancers, these mutations occur and we never understand why. But now that we can actually sequence the DNA, we can go back in the DNA and some of these mutations run in families. So a detailed family history I think is as important as it, to carry it with you, is as important as having a license, a passport. Um, it's very important for medical providers to have this because it takes good information to make good decisions. And history, medical history, tends to repeat itself. So if you have a, a young child at home, if you're a younger person, spend the time now to get a detailed medical family history. Go back as far as you can looking for these type of conditions. Early cancers, early heart disease, early blood clottings in your relatives. And write down what it is and have that with you at all times. Um, so that's the first step. And in this person, should I have genetic screening? So genetic screening, part of it's getting a good genetic history. Um, and, and another part is actually looking at the genetics of the individual that has cancer. Or this, I think, should be done in people that are younger, that have cancer at early ages. Maybe they don't have risk factors, but they get cancer spontaneously. We've heard of cancers like in Kate Middleton. Um, here's a picture of Kate. She's had a cancer recently, but many, many young people are now coming down with colon cancer pancreatic cancer, and it's a surprise, and we're picking it up at young ages, these people I definitely think should have genetic um, screening. And that would consist of some blood testing um, that's done. They look at your specific genes. In colon cancer, chromosomes one and three are specially looked at. There's a condition that's inherited called Lynch disease. There's also one called familial adenomatous polyposis. These are important to know in the families because if we have these mutations, um, in families, we look and we screen much, much earlier. In fact, if let's say this, if colon cancer ha happened in a 40 year old, um, we would want to start screening the family at age 30. The best screening test, in my opinion, for colon cancer is a colonoscopy. Their family should start be screening at age 30. So we step up the surveillance. And similarly, if you have clotting disorders or heart disorders, we step up surveillance. And then we also really encourage all of those things that might trigger genetic changes, these mut abnormalities, these mutations, whether it be cigarettes, lifestyle changes, carrying extra weight, alcohol, different types of things can trigger these cancers, make them more likely. We try to let people know about this so they can make lifestyle changes if it's their choice. Um, so, so that's so I would so to answer this question, I have colon cancer. Should I have genetic screening? The answer is 
Yes, get your genetic screening, which includes a family history and understanding your genetics, especially if you carry the genes. And if you do, let your family know so they might make some changes earlier, earlier on. So that was a great question. I'm glad I got to share that with you. And remember, some of the cancers, we don't even understand what's triggering it. We haven't arised the last few years. Some of the people have used the term turbo cancers. Things in our environment um, has actually changed our tumor suppressor genes, so we can't cut down the cancers that we normally, our own DNA is policemen, um, cleans it up, our, our, our systems are damaged for whatever reasons, and some people are susceptible. These are activating these cancers. So we, if you feel bad in any way, go see your doctor. We need to screen for these things. Make sure you don't have it. If you do have it, early treatment is very important. And in this person who has colon cancer, should they have genetic screening? Yes, and I assume that this person is a younger person. So I'm sorry they you have that, but real healing is going to come from God in his time and in his way. So I ask you the question, you know, is truth important to you? And where do you find truth? Which leads me back to 2 Timothy, which says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And you know, there's many teachers, there's many doctors, there's many people. There's all sorts of theories, some good, some bad. And it says they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. So I want you to hang on to a real source of truth, the Bible, spend time finding biblical prescriptions in prayer and Bible study and Sometimes God uses our illnesses to get us even closer to him. His healing is a hope that we all have where, when, and how we don't know. Until then, we just make each day a good day. So I invite you to share this with your friends and neighbors. Use this as a tool to help other people point them to what we should be focusing on in this day and age. I'm Dr. James Markham, and I'm gonna be back very soon with yet another biblical prescription for life.